So now we want to visualize the model in order that we can communicate it to people and perhaps to understand it a little better as well. Now, we can't visualize this model just by plotting the raw data because we saw that weight has a negative relationship in the model with body fat. But when we, when we look just at the raw data, the raw data shows a very strong positive relationship between body fat and weight. So we need to do something else. Um, and that other thing is to actually show what the model predicts about the relationship between weight and body fat and abdomen um, measurement and, and body fat. So we need, to, we need to get the model to do some work for us, to actually do some prediction with the model. So let's switch to R and get that going. We do, we get R, we get R to do this work, to do this prediction with the model by using the predict function. Surprise, surprise. And this is um, the most basic way that we can use the predict function. If I run this, predict M1, predict using the model, we get all of these values. There's actually 252 values. And these are the predicted value of body fat for each of the observations of weight and abdomen that are in, in the original data set. It's actually this, exactly the same thing as if we did this fitted M1. We get exactly the same values there. Now, we don't want those. We want the model to actually um, predict some values for some data that we make up, some, um, some of that data. Um, and actually, what we want to do is make up data where weight varies. So we've got a range of weights, but we hold abdomen constant. We hold the value of abdomen constant. We just give it one value. And so the graph that we're aiming to make is a graph. I'll just put this on so you can see me. The graph we're aiming to make is a graph with um, the predicted value of body fat on the y-axis and on the x-axis weight. And we can do that for an average abdomen size. That's what we're aiming to do. And that will allow us to see that negative relationship between weight and the predicted body fat. OK, to do this, we need to give predict some new values of weight, and new values of abdomen to do those predictions on. And there are a couple of rules that we must abide by when we make some new data that we're going to give to predict. One of those rules is the data must use exactly the same names as we used in the model. So here, weight and abdomen. Okay. And the other rule is we must give this, give those variables in a data frame type object. So this is how we do it. We'll use a function called expand.grid to make a data frame of the variables. And then we make the variables. We make one called weight, weight equals, and we're also going to make abdomen equals. We're going to make another one called abdomen. Now, the, now we said, let's, let's say that the value of abdomen that we want these predictions to be made for is the mean value of abdomen in the data set. So we use mean of the values of in the abdomen vari variable in the original data, which is DD. So DD dollar abdomen is a quick way to reference that variable in the data set. So they're the real observed values of abdomen measurement. And we, we take the mean of that. So if we do this, we could just run this little bit here. It's 92.55. So we're going to make a graph um, that shows the relationship between weight and body fat, predicted body fat, holding abdomen constant at 92.55595. Now, what values do we want to use for weight? Well, we want to make a sequence of values. We'll go sequence, and we do from. So let's use the minimum value of weight in the original data. And then two, let's go to the maximum value of weight in the data. And then length is the number of values. Let's do 100 so we can get um, a smooth line. If we do too few, few we'll get um, bumpy lines. OK, so we need to assign this 
to an object. Let's call that because we want to use it. Call it new data. And run that. Now if we look at new data here, we see it's got two columns. One's called weight and one's called abdomen. Now these names, like I said before, they must be exactly the same as the names of the variables in the model M1. And you can see the value of abdomen is constant all the way down to the bottom is constant. Whereas weight goes from the minimum value of weight in the data set, 118.5, to the maximum, 363.15. So we've made that new data that we're going to do the predictions on. And now what we do is make an object and assign to it predictions from model M1 but with some new data, we'll call that new data. Oh, sorry, that's what we called it, new data. We're going to do something else quickly here. We're also going to ask for confidence interval. So not just the fitted value, not just the prediction, but also um, a measure of confidence in those predictions. So we run that line, and it's produced this P1 object. It's got a hundred, let's have a look at it. It's got a hundred rows. That's because we made a hundred values of weight. Here's the fitted value in this column. So that's the, uh, sorry, the predicted, that's the predicted value. Here's the lower confidence limit of that value. And here's the upper confidence interval, confidence limit. Perfect. So we've got that um, predicted data. Now we're going to do a little bit of tidying, a bit of housekeeping, and let's put these two things together. Let's put them together into an object. We'll just call it MN1. We put them together, putting together their columns. So we do a C bind, a column bind of new data and the predicted data. So new data is what we created. That's the weight and abdomen data. And there's the predicted data in P1. Run that. We can have a look at N1 just to be sure we understand what it is. Here are the weights we made up. Here are the, here's the value of abdomen that we made. Here's the predicted value for that weight and that abdomen value. And here's the lower and upper and confidence limits of that prediction. Perfect. So now we have that model output. Now we need to make a graph to see what it looks like. I'll walk through this relatively slowly just in case you're still having um, difficulty with ggplot. If you are it's totally fine because ggplot is quite difficult but it's, it's very powerful that's why we have you use it. So ggplot. In here we'll give it the data. That's all I'll do right here. I'll use it in this this way and let's do a line. So geome line. Now we needed to give it the mapping equals aesthetics. Um, on the x we'll give it, uh, we want the weight variable that we made. And on the y, do you remember what that was going to be? That's um, in N1, the y-axis we want to be fit. That's the predicted value of body fat from the model. So it's fit here. Good. Let's run that. So it is a negative relationship. We haven't made a mistake when we were interpreting that coefficient. It is actually that the model sees there is a, a, has fitted a negative relationship between predicted body fat on the y-axis and weight on the x-axis. Okay, one thing to note right now is that the predicted value of body fat goes negative for mean abdomen, um, for the value of mean abdomen, um, it go, the, the value of predicted body fat goes negative above about 300 um, pounds of, of weight. And that is not good. It's not good that we've made a model that can predict the impossible. Um, you can't have less than zero body fat. So um, actually, this is kind of suggesting that a different type of model would be uh, appropriate. Uh, we're not going to do that. We're going to continue on now. Um, but it's one of the things that we might conclude actually is that our model is somewhat inappropriate and development of a better model 
is worthwhile here. Let's just do one more thing, and that's to put um, the confidence intervals on the graph, and we can do that. Um, it's, it's relatively um, it's relatively straightforward to use a function called geome smooth to put that on. Um, so we give that again mapping equals AES and we give it x equals weight, y equals fit just as before and then we do y min equals lower and y max equals upper. Okay so where's that come from? Well y y min and y max is a bit like color and x and y and shape. They're things about the plot that we can assign one of our variables to. So the thing that we're assigning to y min is lower. The lower LWR sorry, variable in our data set. That's the lower confidence interval. So y min give it the lower confidence interval and y max give it upper UPR. That's from here in the data. Okie dokie. The other thing we need to do here is now tell R, tell R to not do anything fancy. So we do stat is identity. This just tells it to not, this tells GM Smooth to not do anything but plot what we want. Let's try running that. Okay, we get this warning, ignoring unknown aesthetics, y min and y max. I don't know why this is coming up because actually R is not ignoring those aesthetics. It's putting them on, you can see them here. Um, and so now we get this nice gray region that's showing um, our um, confidence uh, range here. And remember that this is the um, confidence range of the regression. So this is where the regression line is likely to occur. It's not where the predicted data or, or more data is likely to occur. It's where the regression line uh, is likely to be. Super. So that is um, helping us interpret the model. Um, we can see that over the range of weights that we've got in the data, we go from, well, if we, if we, if we stick to, to saying zero, it goes from zero to about 30 because negative is impossible. It goes from about zero to 30. So across the whole range of weights in the data set, we've got a range of body fat predicted that goes from about zero to 30. Remember, this is the graph of the effect of weight or the relationship with weight when we have the average value of um, abdomen. Okie dokie. What about the other graph? We might want to look at the other graph, make that. What we're going to do is do this the easy way. I've copied all of that that was needed to produce that graph. I'm going to put it here and then alter it. So the, the first thing to do is to change this to be not a sequence of weights, but rather to be just the mean weight. So the other graph is going to be abdomen on the x-axis um, and we're going to then fix weight at the mean weight just like we did before with abdomen um, with the previous graph but with the two switched. So weight is mean weight and then we do abdomen is the sequence this time from the minimum value of abdomen to the max of abdomen with length equals 100. Oh, I forgot something. You see the plus down here. I've forgotten something. There's a there's a bracket missing somewhere. I think just here. See all those red X's we have here. There we fixed it. Run that. I had a plus remaining, so that's why I get an error. Here, I don't need to correct anything. I just run it again. Here we've got the new data. We can run that without any changes. We can run that without any changes. Now here, we just need to change what's on the x-axis to abdomen here and here. Hopefully now that works. Great, so for across, across the range of abdomen values um, that, applause, that, that, that we have in the original data, um, here's the predicted body fat. Uh, values from 0 to 80. 
and um, there's relatively high confidence in this regression as well. Uh, we saw before that the confidence interval for the um, uh, estimate of the slope of this relationship didn't overlap zero. In fact, it was quite um, far away from zero, and that's why um, we see this really strong, uh, quite tight relationship here. This is positive, just as we saw from the coefficients table. Okay, so that's um, making a couple of graphs. Um, when we were, when we report the results, maybe they're the two graphs that we choose to use to display the uh, the model, the uh, the model that we've fitted. We can't display the negative relationship with the raw data. So in this case, we might have to use the model to actually display what we found. There are other things that we could do um, that um, we might cover later in the course. This is one way to visualize the outcome of a model. Okay, in the next step, um, I'll talk about reporting of results, but uh, let's just take a break.